With all the news about the new iPad Air and how much of a huge upgrade it is, it might have been really easy to forget about the new standard iPad. It's in its eighth generation now, and despite having next to no change in design, it's still one of the better deals in technology. And it also might be one of the best places to get your student work done if you're at college or university or even still at school. So let's take a closer look. I'd love to sit here and mention all the design changes from last year, but there actually aren't any. This is the tried and tested iPad design that we've known for years, and I'm mainly okay with that. You could argue the larger bezels combined with no screen lamination are starting to date the look, but for the entry level iPad, you can't really blame them for not changing it up. If there's one thing I do wish they'd moved on from though, it's the lightning port. Changing this to USB-C would make it a lot more versatile and remove a lot of the headaches lightning brings. Not to mention it would make them a lot more classroom friendly using the same ports as Chromebooks, but it's not a deal breaker. The big change here that you'll notice is the new chip Apple has popped in here. It's the A12 Bionic processor from the iPhone XS models and it's a fantastic upgrade over the A11 Fusion before it. It might not be the most exciting thing to talk about, but it means the iPad will be supported software-wise for years, and importantly, it should remain fast enough while doing so. Speaking of performance, in day-to-day -day use this has been totally fine for me. The A12 chip can keep up with multitasking, note-taking, photo editing, gaming, and even 4K video editing no problem. And while it's not as quick as an iPad Pro, there's no hint of sluggishness here, at least for now. The big question here though is, can the iPad be a good computer for students? Well, a lot of that comes down to the app support. A piece of hardware is only as good as its apps, and as a tablet, the iPad really has no contest. iPad apps are powerful, varied, and stand head and shoulders above anything an Android tablet can offer. But this needs to compete on a Chromebook and cheap laptop level to be considered a good machine for students. The iPad does do a lot right here to compete. iPad OS is becoming increasingly powerful with desktop glass internet browsing, proper multitasking, drag and drop support, a decent file system, and full support for mouse, keyboards, and trackpads. You could even argue it opens the door to more interesting things too. The Apple Pencil support in this iPad allows it to become an incredible place to take notes, sketch, draw, or even design in much more powerful apps than you'd find on a Chromebook. Pro-level apps like LumaFusion, Procreate and Notability are all iPad specific and take advantage of its power and form factor to give you an experience you won't find so easily elsewhere, and they don't run high price tags either. Importantly, there's loads of apps that are great to learn with on the iPad too. Off the bat, you get iWork from Apple with Pages, Keynote and Numbers, which are all excellent pieces of software to get work done with, but the support from Microsoft for the Office Suite and Google's G Suite is all rather excellent too, so you won't have any problems with these. The iPad's also great at brass tack stuff as well, like the battery. You get a genuine all-day experience here. The screen is bright and is still retina quality, and there's still a headphone jack. It's good at fun stuff too. The iPad is a great place to consume media, browse the internet, and even play some games. Not to mention the iPad is utterly portable at a mere 490 grams. Seriously, it feels like a small notebook, and the build quality is fantastic. It's way off that cheap feel you get with lower end laptops. The iPad 8th generation starts at £329 for the 32GB model or £299 if you're a student, which is a good starting price, but it is just that, a starting price. Let's face it, 32GB of storage is a really small amount of space, and while I'm confident you could make it work if you're careful around your apps and worked in the cloud for a lot of the things that you do, you should really be looking at ponying up the extra £100 to stretch to the 128GB model if you can afford it. And of course, if you're looking to get the full iPad experience, you're going to want to pick up one of these keyboards, and if you're doing any form of artistic work or note-taking work, you're going to want to pick up an Apple Pencil. These cost £159 and £89 respectively, which starts bringing the price into that Chromebook and cheap Windows laptop areas, which can make this a harder sell. However, you don't need to pick up these specific accessories to have a good experience on the iPad. For a long time, I was using a third-party Bluetooth keyboard from Logitech called the Keys to Go, which is this absolutely tiny, super thin and lightweight keyboard. And they also make something called the Logitech Crayon, which is an Apple Pencil replacement. You can pick both of these up on Amazon for over half the price. 
There's also loads of other accessories out there which does the job as well, and I'll be sure to link some of those in the description below if you want to check them out. A harsh reality we're currently facing is a lot of us are now studying and working from home. One of the main forms of communication at the moment is through Zoom or Google Hangouts or Teams, and sadly the iPad has a bit of an Achilles heel here. Using these applications is fine, but as soon as you multitask or move to another app, the camera stops working. And while it's not the end of the world, you can still hear and talk to people, it makes the already difficult connection more trying. This is something you don't get with a Chromebook or a laptop. Another drawback for the iPad and iPad OS as a whole is there's no multi-user support either. I understand this is possible if you're a school, but for end consumers, it's just not here yet. That's a shame. If you're planning on sharing this iPad around your family, then you'll have to be extra careful with your files and data. So should you buy this if you're a student? Well, let's put it this way. There is nothing in this price range that comes close to the performance and hardware you're going to get out of the iPad 8th generation. But you need to understand the limitations of what it can do. If you think you can work within those limitations, then totally go for it. You're going to get a much better experience out of the iPad than you would from a Chromebook or a cheaper Windows laptop. But if you do rely on laptop specifics or certain applications, then it might be really easy to get caught on the hangups here. Despite my recommendations, don't buy the iPad because it's cool. Buy the iPad because it's going to make your work and learning experience better, and only you can really decide if it's going to do that. Anyway, that rounds up my thoughts on the iPad 8th generation. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a load and it allows me to make more videos like this one. If you've got any questions about this iPad specifically, then leave a comment and I'll try my best to get back to you and pop a like on the way out too. That would be massive. Anyway, I will see you all in the next one.